Eugene Teo here for Mountain Dog Diet, and today I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about one of the most important yet simplest things that you can start to do straight away to learn how to auto-regulate your training, how to start managing inflammation and stress, and how to avoid injuries and getting sick throughout the year so you can consistently make progress with your training. Stay tuned. <laughs> So it starts with a concept known as heart rate variability. Now, this is going to be a slightly longer video, but I've gone ahead and put some notes down in, into the description box below, so be sure to go check that out. Now, with everything that we do with training in the gym, with bodybuilding, with trying to build muscle mass, with trying to burn fat, what we've got to understand is that consistency will always beat intensity. Now, as much as I love training hard, as much as you guys love training hard too, I'm sure you'll understand the fact that what we do in the gym is a marathon, not a sprint. So the guy or the girl who can train harder for longer over a longer period of time consistently is going to get a lot more results and less injuries and enjoy the process a lot more than somebody who pushes really, really hard for a short amount of time and ends up burning themselves out or at worst, getting injured. So. What we want to look at here is ways that we can start listening to our body, start listening to the biofeedback cues and learning how to manipulate when to push hard and when to pull back. The cool thing is this kind of framework can then be applied to any training program that you do. So you can start to customize it to your own needs. So what is heart rate variability? Now if we're looking at somebody's heart rate, let's say here we've got someone's heart is beating at 60 beats per minute, for example. Now, Contrary to what most people will think, the heart doesn't work like a metronome. What I mean by that is that the consistency of the heartbeats isn't very, very consistent. It's not going to beat at 60 beats per minute on the second every second. What you're going to have is this, is this inherent variability. So if we were to map out somebody's heart rate across a period of time, what you might find is between these two intervals, these two heartbeats, you're going to have maybe... 0.75 of a second between these two beats. Between these two beats here, it might be 1.28 seconds between the two beats. And between these two beats here, it might be 1.03 or whatever else it might be. And what's important is over a long period of time, it averages out to 60 beats per minute. But what we can see here is there is some sort of variation between each beat. Now, as the name suggests, that is what we call heart rate variability. So why do we care about heart rate variability? Well, in the research, your HRV has been linked to the functioning of your autonomic nervous system. What that means in plain English is the autonomic nervous system controls all of the different systems and functions in your body that you don't have conscious awareness or control over. They happen automatically. We've got things like heart rate, blood pressure, we have things like your digestion, the amount at which you recover and build up new protein stores, that at which you shed fat, all these sort of things that you can't consciously control. For instance, you can't tell your stomach to start secreting more gastric juices to help with the digestive process. You can't tell your pancreas to start secreting more insulin to help with carbohydrate metabolism. You can't tell your heart rate to start increasing or your blood pressure to start rising. You can't tell your thyroid to start producing more T4. And you can't tell that T4 to then be converted in the liver into metabolically active T3. All of these things just happen automatically. They happen as a direct result of your internal and external environment, which is governed by things like mental stress, training stress, internal, external stress, your diet and your supplementation. And all of this is what's governed by what we call the autonomic nervous system, which can then be broken down into two distinct subsystems that you may have heard of before. We have on one side the sympathetic nervous system and on the other side the parasympathetic nervous system. So sympathetic is all about increasing stimulation, increasing arousal, getting your body prepared and what's called the fight or flight response in response to some sort of external or internal stressor or threat. 
On the other hand, we have the parasympathetic nervous system, which is all about calming things back down. It's the rest and digest repair process. It's about rebuilding muscle tissue, replenishing glycogen, bringing back a state of homeostasis, producing sex hormones, producing immune system hormones, producing thyroid hormones. All of that is governed by the parasympathetic nervous system. So back to your heart rate and heart rate variability and what this all means. So we know that these things are clearly linked to the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. And just like we just said, these things are completely out of your control. They just happen as a response to your external and internal environment. So let's say in this instance that you get stressed out, whether it's work, maybe you get sick, you get an infection, maybe you're training, you're training really hard. Whatever it is, there is an increased need for blood to be diverted through your body. So what happens is your heart rate increases and your heart rate variability decreases. Why does it do that? To deliver blood to your body, not just faster, but at a more consistent rate. That's what's key there. That's why the heart rate variability starts to tank downwards. Now this happens without getting too deep into it by the stimulation of the sympathetic nervous system, which then causes an increase in stress hormones, namely norepinephrine, which then regulates a faster heartbeat and a more consistent heartbeat. Once that stressful event goes away, the parasympathetic nervous system will then kick in and start to clear out those excess stress hormones and calm you down, bringing the heart rate down and bringing the heart rate variability back up. So we understand that when we get stressed out, we're going to produce more stress hormones and we're going to see an increase in heart rate and a decrease in HRV. Now, this is not a bad thing. It's those stress hormones that are going to help and go a long way in terms of improving training drive, your focus, motivation and overall performance. You want those stress hormones going up around training. But of course, any time outside of that, we want them backing right off. When we're waking up in the morning, when we're relaxing throughout the day, when we're eating, we don't want a heightened state of arousal. That's where the parasympathetic mode should be kicking in to help us rest, digest, and calm down. Now, this is where it becomes so important to balance these two things out, where we know how to switch it on when we need it and switch it off when we don't need it to make sure that we're not just stimulating a lot of training responses, but we're getting out of the gym and we're recovering from that training properly which is why it's so important to start tracking things like your heart rate variability. So when it comes to measuring your HRV, I recommend doing it upon waking in the morning to give yourself what's called a morning readiness score. So you're gonna get yourself a device like uh, the Polar H7 or the Polar H10, Aura Rings, uh, Fitbits or Garmin watches, a lot of these different devices on the market now uh, that can be used to measure your HRV in the morning. You're gonna wear them and it's gonna give you some sort of a number in the morning anywhere between about 30 to maybe around 100. So what I've found through my experience, and also what the research does show specifically with performance-based athletes like powerlifters, bodybuilders, uh, Olympic lifters, MMA fighters, is the sweet spot tends to sit around 75 to 85 as a heart rate variability score. That's the point where you're able to train hard and push really, really hard in the gym, but you're also able to recover adequately from it. You're not creating too much damage to your nervous system or to your bodily systems where you're tanking your thyroid or you're tanking your digestive system or you're creating all this inflammation through your body. Now, if you start getting up on this end of the spectrum towards 90, 95, or maybe even over 100, that means that your body's in much more of a parasympathetic state. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing. All that means is your body's parasympathetic nervous system has kicked into gear. And long term, it may mean that you struggle to perform properly in the gym. You might not be able to get as good a contraction. You might not have that same training drive and that stimulation and focus when you're going for your hard working sets. Now, on the other hand, if you find yourself trending down towards this end of the spectrum and you're waking up at say 65 or 60 or 50 or below that, what that's telling me is that your body is waking up after an eight hour or six hour period of being in bed and sleeping where it should have been resting, digesting, recovering and it's waking up in a stressed out state. It's producing significant amounts of stress hormones and catecholamines, which is not good. So what that means is if you were to wake up at this point here, about 60 or so, 
and you are then to add the extra stresses of stimulants and a hard training session, which you can probably push through with the right amount of stimulants, it's gonna start dipping deeper and deeper into your recovery and pushing you further down the spectrum of potentially overtraining. It's classed as overtraining because your body's not producing enough of those parasympathetic hormones to recover from the bouts of training. If you do it long term, that's where you're gonna start getting a lot of those sympathetic dominant side effects. Things like impaired thyroid functioning, things like impaired digestive functioning, inability to burn fat, slow progress in terms of muscle mass. You're gonna get increased inflammation going out through the body. You might get more joint pain, increased injury risk. You might lose your libido. You might start waking up really, really tired all the time, having disrupted sleep. And to top it all off, you might start to get some memory lapses, a bit of brain fog, a bit of comp brain, which we sort of associate as just dieting and part of the process. But actually what it indicates is being in this state of sympathetic dominance and a low HRV output for too long. So if you're waking up in this state, what you need to ask yourself is, how well am I really, really responding to my current training program? And you gotta be honest with yourself. You gotta say, am I getting the progress that I expect to be getting out of it? Am I getting bigger and leaner or, and stronger? Or on the other hand, am I getting more run down? Am I not burning fat? Am I not building muscle? Am I looking worse over the last few months? Am I getting more beat up in the gym? Am I getting sick more often? Are my joints hurting? Am I starting to get symptoms of indigestion, of poor digestive functioning? Am I constantly feeling on edge or anxious? Or am I constantly feeling like I'm out of breath? All of these different things may start to trend towards you being in this state of sympathetic dominance, which you can then go and confirm with your HRV scores. Now, if that is the case, what do we do? This is where auto-regulation comes in and listen to your body and those biofeedback cues. If you're waking up and your HRV is down here, instead of training on that day, it's probably a better idea to take the day off or to go in and do a very much light, deloaded, stimulatory session and work on recovery techniques until you can bring your heart rate variability right back up. It may not even be training related. It may be an increased need of supplementation or cleaning up your diet, fixing up nutrient deficiencies, improving restorative activities like long walking or yoga, which I really, really love to do to boost up this parasympathetic heart rate variability score. It might be introducing these sort of techniques to help to reduce inflammation through your body so you can push harder and train harder without tanking your overall recovery and potential to see gains in the gym. So once you get yourself back into this sweet spot, this baseline, that's where you want to live. That's where you want to try to maintain as much as you can. And this is where auto-regulation of your lifestyle and your training comes into play and becomes such a powerful thing to do. So again, just because a program says three, four, five, or six days a week of training doesn't mean you need to follow it. What you're going to find long-term as you start tracking these numbers is it could be things like a poor night's sleep, slipping up on your diet, missing some meals, or having a cheat meal out, Whatever it may be in your nutrition or your whole lifestyle in general, maybe it's the kids, maybe it's work, whatever happens, it may very well be enough to push you back down this continuum by 10, 15, 20 beats of the, of the HRV. Now, if you wake up like that, that's a sign to you that potentially you may need to focus on some recovery techniques. It's not always a bad thing because generally speaking, the body can bounce back. But if you see it trending downwards over a few days or a week or so, you know it's time to start switching things up and maybe it's just as simple as spacing out your training days more because those programs that you're doing for the most part, they're not programmed for you specifically. They don't understand your personal physiology and your personal lifestyle. This is where you're gonna, you have to be your own coach. You're gonna learn how to coach yourself, listen to your body and learn how to auto-regulate all of your different variables to make sure that you can stay in this spot where you're consistently making good progress where you're not putting yourself at risk of getting injured or increasing inflammation in the body or being just around the corner from getting really, really sick, which is gonna set you back a lot further in your training. Okay, so I hope this clarifies a lot of things on heart rate variability for you guys as to what it is, why it's so important, and hopefully you're gonna start tracking it if you're not already. What I'd love for you guys to do is leave me a comment below and let me know your thoughts on the topic. Is it something you're gonna start looking into? Is it something that you already are looking into? And if you are, let me know where your numbers are at and what you're doing effectively each day to make sure that you're staying in that sweet spot. All right, guys, I'll see you next time.